All right, everyone, happy Christmas first. That means that fall is over, so it's time for my autumn reading wrap up. I don't have a whole lot to talk about today. As you can see, this is a very short stack of autumn reads, but honestly, my autumn was insane. Uh, my life was crazy and I was moving, so I didn't have a lot of time for reading, so I'm actually quite proud of this tiny little stack. All right, so the first one I wanna talk about is the self-help book I read, which is, it's called The Breakup Because It's Broken. This is co-written by Greg and Amira Brent, right? Barent? Mm? This was so good. If you are going through a breakup, you should definitely read this. Uh, I was ending a relationship that had lasted five years, and it was tough. The right decision, and it was very amicable. There was no, like, screaming or anything like that. It was just hard because breakups are hard, because breakups suck even when they're the right choice. I especially loved this book because it was fun. They would make fun of themselves for their own terrible breakup mistakes and share silly stories from other people while also giving really honest, good advice. It was nice to read something that was helpful without just being completely depressing or just encouraging you to give in to all the sadness. Instead, it's encouraging you to process the sadness and move on and be better for it. Then there are the two comic books I read. I read volumes two and three of Alex and Ada. This series is by Jonathan Luna and Sarah Vaughn, and it's really good. I'm definitely glad I read it. I think it's really unique to find a comic book series that's only three books long. But if I'm being honest, I didn't love these as much as I loved the first one. The second one was really good and I enjoyed it, but I just wasn't a huge fan of the ending. I felt like the punishment a character endures was a little too intense for the level of relationship he had been experiencing. That's a good non-spoilery way to say that, right? I definitely still think these are worth a read. They're so fun. It's such a good take on sci-fi and just the AI world building where typically the robots are like the psycho killers who want to destroy humanity. This was really refreshing and really interesting. It's just each book got a little less fun for me. I read Thief Eyes by Jannie Lee Simner. This is actually the only novel I read this quarter, and it was fine. Um, it's set in Iceland, which I thought was really interesting. I haven't read a lot of stuff set in Iceland, and the mythology aspects with Norse mythology and Icelandic folklore. <coughs> What's happening to my voice? Those elements were really interesting and really well written, but unfortunately I just didn't like the characters. I thought the main character was very weak, uh, not in terms of her personality being weak, I mean in terms of how she was written, it was poorly done. And the whole romantic subplot I just hated. I know that I always hate on romantic subplots, so no one's surprised there, but I just thought it was really poorly executed. Um, she's going on an adventure with Ari, and that's definitely the central relationship in this story, even if it just is friends. But there are all these callbacks to like a boyfriend she has back in Arizona that were just really unnecessary, and I felt like it didn't contribute anything to the story, and it actually took me out of the story a lot. You know, I'd be in the middle of really enjoying all of this intense story building and world building and oh god is the villain gonna catch them and oh okay so boyfriend drama again cool i will say in its defense though i think when you decide to read a book with a 16 year old narrator that is kind of just what's gonna happen but like come on fantasy writers prove that romance drama doesn't have to be the center of every fantasy story so i enjoyed the story just fine i wasn't miserable or anything while i was reading it i liked it enough to finish it but i will definitely be selling this one to my used bookstore and then oh and then there's the princess saves herself in this one by amanda lovelace oh my god I cannot express how much I love this. Uh, this is a book of poetry, but I think it's really accessible to people who haven't necessarily read a lot of poetry because it is a linear story. It's not just a collection of poems. There's definitely a narrative moving through it. So I think it's a really good opportunity for any of you that might be watching who aren't into poetry to kind of dabble in it for the first time. You can obviously tell that there's a really awesome feminist presence just by the title, and it's so much fun. It's so real and vulnerable, and it deals with a lot of tough struggles of self-harm and child abuse, but it does it in a way that I felt was very understandable and relatable. A lot of times when authors are talking about those inherently tough topics, it can end up coming across as very whiny almost and the truth is 
People who have suffered from self-harm or abuse aren't meek little nothing wisps of people who just sit around and complain all the time. They are full complex beings and I really appreciated that this book did it. You can definitely tell that Amanda Lovelace is writing something she has experienced and she understands. So amazing in fact that this is currently my favorite read of 2016. It's brilliant. I love it. And that's it. That's all I got. Just those little five. Hopefully it won't be too long until my next video. I am hoping to participate in some sort of Christmassy booktube-a-thon this year. I did my first one over the summer and really enjoyed it. And now that it's December 1st, I can finally start reading this collection of short stories again, which I didn't finish last year. So I hope you're having a good introduction to the holiday season, whatever you celebrate, even if you just think snow is cool. Hopefully it's good, and I will see you next time.